Patients suffering from acute coronary syndrome fall in one of two broad categories, moderate risk of death or non-fatal myocardial infarction, and high risk of death or fatal myocardial infarction. Patients are considered at high short-term risk for death or fatal myocardial infarction if at least one of the following conditions are present. 20 minutes or more of prolonged ongoing discomfort while resting, pulmonary edema, new or worsening mitral regurgitation murmur, ST segment changes on EKG, the presence of a gallop rhythm or rails, or hypotension. Patients in this high-risk category are immediately triaged to early cardiac catheterization, especially if the patient is willing to undergo such an invasive procedure, and if revascularization is a possibility. If the patient is high-risk, medical therapy usually includes intravenous heparin in addition to aspirin, nitrates, and beta blockers. Heparin and aspirin are used as prophylactics against venous thrombosis in the coronary arteries. Nitrates dilate the coronary arteries, increasing blood flow. Beta blockers can decrease the heart's workload by slowing the heart rate and decreasing blood pressure. If the patient continues to experience ischemic symptoms or variant angina, calcium channel blockers may be used as well. These are potent coronary vasodilators and act to increase the oxygen supply to the heart. They may prevent the periodic constriction resulting from the platelet-derived prostaglandins. Calcium channel blockers also act to decrease myocardial oxygen demand. Angiotensin-converting enzyme inhibitors, or ACE inhibitors, can improve cardiac output and exercise tolerance, and may be used in addition to other medical therapies, since they interrupt the angiotensin-renin-aldosterone axis and thus reduce blood pressure and workload of the heart. Patients are considered at moderate risk if they have any of the following. Angina that is resolved with rest or the administration of nitroglycerin, the likelihood of coronary artery disease, EKG changes including T-wave changes, Q-waves or ST changes, nocturnal angina, or are 65 years of age or older. A patient in the moderate risk category is usually admitted to the cath lab and then to a monitored cardiac care unit until the diagnosis of myocardial infarction can be ruled out and the severity of the disease determined. The patient should be instructed to notify the nurse immediately if any symptoms return. If angina symptoms do return, the nurse should conduct a brief nursing reassessment, notify the physician of the change in the patient's condition, monitor the 12-lead EKG, administer pharmacological agents according to the physician's orders, including oxygen, nitroglycerin, either sublingually or intravenously, or morphine sulfate, which reduces pain and anxiety, and create a calm atmosphere to reduce patient stress and workload of the heart. As the patient's medications are adjusted or introduced, it is the nurse's responsibility to teach the patient about these medications, their actions, and any possible side effects. The nursing staff should encourage the patient to feel comfortable with the direction the treatment is taking and to reassure him or her of the outcome.